<laughs> right, after, right after the election, um, we took a poll of Americans' attitudes on these issues across a number of, not just on marriage, but relationship recognition, don't ask, don't tell, employment discrimination, hate crimes. Um, one of the, you know, biggest numbers that came out of this, or, or the most interesting numbers that came out of it, that um, you know really underscores what Matt and others are saying, is that 19% of people have said that their opinions have become more favorable over the last five years. And that 19% may not sound like a big number, but imagine like, I keep saying, imagine 19% of Grey Goose drinkers switch to Absolute. You know, over five years. Absolute would be pretty happy. That's a big number. And, and, and so, you know, and, and when, we, when, we, when we dug in deeper into the numbers, folks said, you know, knowing the top thing was knowing someone who's gay or lesbian. That was the number one thing. But after that, it was seeing characters, gay and lesbian characters in the movies, seeing gay and lesbian characters on TV. You know, the, our visibility is incredibly important. And I can't tell you how many folks that I talked to at some of the rallies afterwards when I was just kind of having casual conversations about them talking to their mothers and grandmothers about these issues. And some of them really weren't completely out. You know, I have to hand a, a business card that says gay on it, and it's orange. Um, and, you know, and I had to deal with the fact that my grandmother changed from, you know, being able to go to church and say her son works on campaigns for, you know, black people in the South to, like, he works on gay marriage. Um, you know, but that's, uh, that's something that, you know, I think that more, you know, the campaigns that are being run, that, you know, as more and more um, young people come to these issues, as all of us think about, you know, what we need to do moving forward individually, is it, it is coming out. It is having those conversations. And just one more thing on the poll um, that was really interesting. When we dug deeper into the numbers, you know, the generational shit, the generational divide that we all hear about and that we all, it's there. It's there across racial barriers. It's there across religious barriers. I mean, it it is there, you know, um, and it's not going to come quick enough for us, but five, ten years down the road, if each and every one of us does the things that we know is important in our, in our own lives, not just having the conversations, but turning to the person that we know in our own lives who's not having those conversations and provide them the support and encouragement to have them, you know, the world will look better and we'll each, you know, play a part in that. I hate to speak after that. <laughs> that was like a rallying cry. But I am going to say something else. I see my role as kind of forcing discussion in a lot of different directions. And so I'll, let me, I'm going to give, give it another go. Um, two things, two stories. Um, one is a conversation I had with one of my oldest, closest friends, um, who's very involved in, in politics, who's heterosexual, um, African-American woman, who um, was very outraged by the kind of backlash. She, she lived in San Francisco in the 70s at that time, now lives in Boston, was very outraged by what she was reading um, of blaming the California African-American community um, turning out for Obama for the, um, for the passing of Prop 8. And she challenged me with this question. She said, do you really think that the African-American community is more homophobic than the gay community is racist? And I thought, that's a fair question. That's actually a fair question. Which brings me to my second story, um, which is um, watching um, Milk, the new Gus Van Sant film, and watching um, Times of Harvey Milk again, um, Rob's great film. What I, I couldn't help but notice was the nature of the strategizing and the way in which Harvey Milk was all about, throughout his career, all about coalition building. He, he may have been a gay icon, but he, was, he got elected because of coalition building, and he was deeply committed to that. And the great tragedy of his death is not only his death, but also the death of George Moscone, who was a progressive mayor. The two of them were leading the charge for truly representative democracy in San Francisco, and because of the, that was an incredibly power, politically powerful assassination, because with them gone, Dianne Feinstein, who was Dan White's mentor, on the board of supervisors, took over and turned the city over to her developer husband and changed the face of San Francisco and of San Francisco politics. Coalition building should be a part of anything that any of us do. And I think in recent years it hasn't been. Um, I don't, I mean, with, I, I understand that I'm misinformed about Prop 6 and that there was a lot that went on that I didn't know, but I do think that the nature of the coalition organizing that was already in place because of Harvey Milk's successive campaigns allow for a different kind of organizing around that, that I would say um, the GLBT community has lost track of, has lost sight of, is no longer a basic MO. It's not the modus operandi. It may be something to reach for when times get tough, but it's not a basic way of doing business anymore. And that I think is a tragedy. 
So anybody want to speak to that or say anything about that before you open it up? Well, in, in displaying my ongoing foolishness, yeah. Um, um, uh, <laughs> um, uh, You're just exposing my foolishness. So no, 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 I think that um, um, uh, the, the, you know, the reaction to that CNN exit poll that said that 70% of African Americans had voted um, yes on A. Um, you know, everyone knew the same day that if you took every person over 60, an age to which I'm comfortably close, uncomfortably close, or comfortably <laughs> close, um, and had them not vote, that we won easily. Um, there were all sorts of, in any election, you can take all sorts of demographics and break them down. I thought the reason that one had such traction is because gay people expected the support of the African American community. Because gay people expect, as I think we keep saying, and I say we advisedly, we keep saying, this is the same thing, it's another civil rights battle. We keep drawing these tiresome comparisons to the interracial marriage case in 1967 um, and to the fight for civil rights. And, and the, 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 I have two problems with that. One, it's wrong. Um, this isn't exactly the same thing. No two, no two forms of discrimination in America have ever been exactly the same. No two civil rights fights have ever been the same. They may have similarities, and that's worth talking about to people. But look, if somebody came up to you and said, oh, I'm hearing impaired, I totally get what it's like to be gay and what it was like growing up, you wouldn't buy it. And when the gay community says to black people, we totally get your struggle, you should totally get ours, it's the same thing. The level of presumption is, is enormous. And, but I think this dovetails over to coalition building. You don't build coalitions by asking people to help you when you're in trouble. You build coalitions by going to people when they're in trouble and you see the communality. And to the gay community that expected the overwhelming support of the African American community, I and the Latino community, I want to say, where were we on Prop 189 and Prop 209? Those two things did exactly the same thing that Prop 8 did. They amended the state constitution to take an important civil rights issue out. Now, you may disagree with affirmative action, which was 189, if I've got 187, if I've got the numbers right, or 209, which was English only. But what you should never agree with, LGBT people should never agree with, Constitution should never agree with is changing the fundamental document, the Constitution, in order to win a political fight. But I have to tell you, I don't think the gay community was there all that strongly on 187 and 209, and we shouldn't have expected the African American and Latino community to turn out overwhelming for, for us and see those connections when we, we didn't see them just a few years earlier. Thank you. I think that's one of the great things that's coming about with the new grassroots movements. You know, like, Join the Impact had a huge thing on their website about the Oscar Grant shooting in Oakland. You know, and, and that's what the newer generation, I think, is realizing, is that we have to help everybody with their struggles, or we're not going to get that support in 2010. But, but, but also, I think we have to define what we is, because I think that is an ongoing struggle, that there wasn't the kind of tremendous support needed from the African-American gay and Latino community. You know, a lot of them didn't feel as invested in, in the campaign or invested in the movement as a whole. And, you know, and so I think that oftentimes there's this conversation about, about what we looks like, and oftentimes, you know, when these votes and when these issues happen, the African-American community is not all straight people. The African American community is made up of many people who are part of the LGBT community. And until, you know, our coalitions are bigger and more representative, you know, the grandmother and grandfather who are voting on this issue are not going to see their sons or daughters or grandparents or grandchildren represented. I think that that's also part of the ongoing struggle that our movement um, for equality needs to address if, as we move forward. And it's kind of amazing that for the first time in history, the Here to Stay Coalition and Baron Rustin yeah. Coalition. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. It's sci-fi. <laughs> but for the first time, they're marching in the MLK Day Parade, you know, through South Central tomorrow. And that wouldn't have happened before these issues arose.